Hi, welcome to Your Business, Your Rules. I'm Kat LeBlanc. This is the podcast for people who want to start and grow an online location independent business so they can live a life of freedom and choice on their own terms. Welcome to episode 58, how to come up with business ideas. Every year, I help hundreds of people come up with their business idea as part of my role as a business strategist. It's one of my favorite things to do. Finding a business idea is the first step to a whole new life of adventure and income opportunities. Some people struggle with choosing one of their many ideas, and if that's you, go to the podcast on deciding on your business idea. But many more people have difficulty coming up with ideas in the first place. So let's talk about creating business ideas. Here's how to come up with a business idea in six steps. One, put any judgment aside. Two, don't use random lists of ideas. More on that later. Three, write out your experience, skills, interests, talents and past projects. Four, look for opportunities to provide value. Five, stay high level. And six, pick the best combination for you. So that sounds relatively simple, but it's easier said than done. So let's look at each step in detail. One, put any judgment, including self-judgment, aside. Generally speaking, as soon as we think of an idea, we then get straight into analysing whether it's a good or bad idea. Would people buy it? Who would want that? Would that even work? Then we might even get into a discussion on whether or not we'd be capable of pulling it off. Who are we to think that we can, insert crazy idea, what will people think? Then comes the option of googling it and seeing if anyone else is doing it, which can all lead down the path of writing the idea off before we even start because it's quite unquote taken or someone else's website looks amazing and we could never do that. No, my advice is don't do that. Don't decide whether it's the one in advance. Don't decide whether or not you're capable of it at this time and don't Google it yet. Essentially, don't cut yourself off at the knees before you can walk. The key to coming up with ideas is, first of all, to allow yourself to freely have ideas and have them in a space of no judgment. It's okay if your ideas are outrageous, pie in the sky, ridiculous, big, small, audacious or underwhelming. The key is to allow the ideas to flow. Capture them as they come and then know you'll do the verification and make a good decision later. In the brainstorming stage when you're coming up with the ideas, your job is to just come up with those ideas. Step 2. Don't use random lists of ideas off the internet. I get it. I like doing that too. To write this article, I was looking at some of those lists and thinking, ooh, that's an interesting one. And at that point, breaking my steps one and two in one go. But here's the point. When you're starting a business, it's for the long term. It's your new way of making money. And the last thing you want to do is end up choosing an idea that feels like squashing yourself into someone else's cocktail dress. And if you want more on that, go to episode 57. The business idea that is right for you is individual. It's personal. It has in many ways nothing to do with what anyone else is doing or what is hot right now or what is on anybody else's list. Why do I say this? The right business idea has to match up with what you want for your life. And the elements of what we want for our lives are one, purpose, meaning we have to care on some level about what we're creating. Two, work style. Everyone is different and enjoys different environments, different tasks and different levels of interaction with people. And three, lifestyle. Everyone wants to live differently outside of their business. And if you want to check out the show notes, I have this in a handy diagram that really helps it make sense. So if you're choosing an idea of a list, it's unlikely to fulfill all of these things for you. 
Let's look at those things. So your purpose, let's address the elephant in the room here. Not everyone is born knowing exactly what they want to do with their life. Some people have a mission and some people don't. Whichever you are is okay. And in fact, there are three different ways to bring passion or purpose into your business. The truth is though, that there are things that you care about and there are things that you don't care about at all. And try getting up every day for something you don't believe in. You may already be experiencing that in your day job. So let's change that. Coming back to the second element of what you're looking for in your life, right? Because you're looking for something when you're looking to create a business idea to change things. Your work style. This is your operating manual. So your work style is also important. Because I made that word up as there wasn't a better one I could find that was already being used. I get asked a lot, what does work style mean? Essentially, this is your operating manual. It tells you, rather than other people, how you tick. Mine would contain information like this. Likes to focus on one project at a time. Do not overload with multiple projects. Gets the best results when working with people on an individual level and does not do well in crowds. Prefers to innovate rather than use traditional processes. So if you don't have your entrepreneurial design report already, which is about your work style, you can get that at myentrepreneurialdesign.com. I wrote about what would be in mine in a rather joking manner, but you can see how this would make some business ideas completely unsuitable for me and make other ways of working also a bad fit. So coming up with business ideas works better when it's an internal rather than external process. So by looking inside rather than looking at lists. Looking at the lifestyle you want. While we can all agree that we don't like long commutes, being micromanaged or crappy working environments, and we do know that pretty much all of us want more time freedom, more control over what we do and more money, this still looks different on an individual level. Running a restaurant is only suitable for you if you don't want to travel much for a good while. On the other hand, a business that involves lots of speaking from stage is likely to only be a fit for you if you do want to travel. So we want to consider what you want to be happening outside of your business as well as inside. So getting to the point of why reading those ideas is not the place for you to get ideas. Lists of ideas don't take what you're interested in, purpose, how you want to live your life, lifestyle and how you do your best work and feel your best at work, work style, into account. They can give us an idea of what's out there, but that's where the usefulness ends. Choosing a business idea from a list is like trying to fit yourself into a box. And does needing to fit yourself into a box sound familiar? Maybe you've already experienced that at work. And in business, we get to make our own rules. That's what this podcast is all about. So how do we go about making our own rules when it comes to business ideas instead of picking from a list? Instead of choosing our business idea from a list, like choosing a job from a job board, we design our own. And that's where step three comes in. So step three is to write down all of your experiences, skills, talents, and interests, and anything else that you feel is relevant. This is how we design a business that fits you rather than choosing yourself a business that feels no better than a job. So let's get a big piece of paper or a fresh document in whatever you like to write things down in. And at the top, write your name, today's date, and the word business ideas. So why today's date? Because later, with even more experience, your piece of paper will look different and there'll be new options for you. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't start now. Okay, your experience. Let's write down all of your career experience as well as anything from school that might be relevant. Also write down any other experiences you have had that gave you knowledge or life experience that other people may not have. For example, I have experience of emigrating, divorce, starting a business, learning languages, amongst others. You may have experienced a child that would not sleep, so you learnt new skills from that. You might have overcome an addiction, had challenging parents, or have had any number of life experiences that enabled you to grow and learn new skills. 
onto your skills. So what skills do you have? As an example, are you trained in coaching? Do you have project management skills? Do you know how to edit videos, handle difficult clients, use Excel? Try and think of as many as you can here. I would challenge you to write down a hundred skills. And this is because you have way more skills than you're going to think of at first. Just by getting through life, likely to at least your 20s, if not a few more decades on top of that, you are going to have done many things in that time, even if you think you haven't. Now getting on to your talents. What is it that you're good at? Remember, no judgment here. No one is watching what you're writing. This is for you. Are you good at numbers? Good at organizing projects? Good at getting things to completion? Are you the one who can smooth over awkward situations? Or are you the one that does the big picture thinking? Write down as many of these as you can. Without judgment of how relevant they may or may not seem right now. Your interests. So what are you interested in? As in, what do you do in your spare time? What would you do in your spare time if you just answered that you don't have any? What do you read about? And if you're always finding yourself looking up stuff on your phone when you shouldn't be, what are you looking up? And then is there anything else? Yes, some of this will seem irrelevant and some of it may be in the end. But the point is to get everything out of your head so you have something to work with. So if there's anything else, write it down. So now on to step four of how to come up with ideas. Now you look for opportunities to provide value. Think about how those experiences, skills, talents, interests, or anything else could be of value for someone else. On your big piece of paper, write, how can I give value? Your profitable business idea that suits you is the overlap between your skills and talents your likes and passions, and a potential paying client. That means a profitable business idea for you is something you like, something you're good at, and something someone else is willing and able to pay for. And your experience could be of value to different groups of people as well. As an example, project management experience could be of value to solopreneurs, bookkeepers, nonprofits, dance studios, or any number of groups. So write down as many options to provide value to different groups of people that you can think of from looking at your big list. So do some writing, take a break, then come back to it, and more ideas will come up as you keep coming back to it. You may also remember things you'd forgotten you did to add to your experiences and skills. And if you'd like a downloadable version of this exercise, that's called the Business Idea Starter Kit and it's at catloblong.com forward slash kit. Step five, so it's important to remember this, is to stay high level, stay big picture. So don't get wrapped up in the business model, although I do have a recommendation on the best business model for you, so check out the podcast about that. That's one of the early ones. And what I mean here is don't wonder if you should run retreats or make an e-course or do consulting at this stage. That's the business model or the way that you're going to deliver the value. Right now, you more want to be thinking in terms of, I'm going to help busy career women lose weight. Or, I'm going to help stressed out small business owners get their books in order. Or, I'm going to help people who work long hours get their dogs exercised or whatever it is on the list that you have of the value that you can provide. What your products and services are inside of your business will change over time as your business evolves. Right now, you're looking for ideas on what your business does, not what your individual products are yet. Otherwise, it can be really easy to get into designing your whole business and falling down the rabbit hole before you've even properly chosen an idea. Now, step six, pick the best combination for you. So try and spend some serious time on steps three and four, where you're writing out everything in your experience, skills, etc. And then four, looking at how to create value and get as many business ideas down as possible. 
It's easy to hit on one idea and get super attached to it, only to potentially bounce to another one, never get to the stage of having looked at all the possibilities and then making a solid choice. Even when my clients are 100% sure they have their business idea already, I step them through a more detailed version of this process. That way, they know they've gotten all the possible ideas out from the beginning before picking the one they feel is the best fit to move ahead with. So what's next? The final stage, at least in the idea generation, is to pick the best combination for you to test in the marketplace. If you have problems deciding on your idea, I have a great podcast on that, which is called Six Steps to Decide on Your Business Idea. And if you want more information on how to build your business in the most cost-effective, time-effective way so that you can get paying clients quickly, and also learn more about business ideas, I recommend checking out my Zero to Paying Clients Masterclass, which is on my website, and you can also get that at catlablong.com forward slash masterclass. All right, I hope that helps you come up with some amazing business ideas, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks for listening to Your Business, Your Rules. I'm Kat LeBlanc. If you like this show, I'd love you to subscribe, share, and leave a review on iTunes. And if you'd like to continue the conversation, head over to my website at catleblanc.com. Until next time.